All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us live at DevCon 2020. My name is Bowen Song, and uh, I'm joined by my teammates, Fu Yao Wang and Yi Chen Ma, um, to present to you a project that has originated from the cloud computing class at Boston University early this spring and evolved during this summer. So this is a project that's about distributed database where each of the distributed instances are replicas of one and another and are kept in sync via the gossip protocol. Yeah. Now you can envision each node playing the game of Whisper or a telephone game, a lot, much like the picture on the right hand side there, so that they can stay in sync with each other. And with the gossip protocol, they can adapt to any type of network topology and communicate the least amount of data necessary using the state-of-the-art set reconciliation protocol. Now, next slide, please. So our agenda today, we will introduce you to some of the traditional databases and some of those common problems within them. And also we will talk about the distributed database in general um, and the cap theory that's evolved in there. We will focus on our database, the Gossiper DB, um, and its architecture. We also um, will present some of the application and the future work. So we did think about uh, doing some kind of a live demo session today. We, uh, we will show performance graph and diagrams to better characterize our work since setting up hundreds of database instances and visualize a cascading data propagation speed up via the gossip protocol is not really possible with our limited resources, but hopefully our presentation will be good enough for you to be able to um, uh, envision this entire process going. And now I would like to hand it off to each and more to start us off with the traditional database and its common problems. Okay. Hi, this is Ethan. It's my pleasure to share our work to you guys here. And databases are very common in our life. For example, in your cell phone, you need a database to store your contacts, and your bank needs a database to store your information. It seems like we store everything in the database, but when the amount of data we need to store become large, for example, for a global company, its customers will be all over the world, a single server may not be able to bear such a large load. Also, a single database may drop because of the power off that the customer cannot use its service anymore. And these problems may cause measurable losses. In this case, a distributed database can solve these problems well. The definition of it is a database in which data is stored across different physical locations. In this picture, we can see they have three databases located in America. Africa, and Asia. Now, distributed databases are already popular. These are the common distributed databases today. TiTB is compatible with MySQL, and it has strong scalability developed by PinCap. And HBase is an open source, non-relational distributed database. And the last one, SDD from CoreOS, which is a lightweight distributed key value database. Because the databases are distributed, there will be a communication between different database services, which may cause problems. For example, I have $100 in my bank account, and I made a transfer in Seattle, sending 100 bucks to my friend. And at the same time, I used another IP in Boston to complete another $100 transfer. If two transfers occur at the same time, the both system in Boston and Seattle will allow these transfers because both servers will see that there is indeed $100 in my account and I have enough money to make the transfer successful. But in fact, totally I transferred $200 to my friend. So you see, something went wrong. For companies like bank, they are sensitive with data. They always want to get the latest data. Otherwise, they may lose a lot of money. Everyone can steal money from bank just like what I said. So how can we solve these problems? To avoid this situation, the bank wants to know the latest information of my balance. Speaking of this, I have to introduce Cap Serum to you guys. Every time when you mention distributed database, you have to talk about Cap. 
CAP stands for consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. Consistency means that we always get the latest data, no matter which node we read from. If the data cannot be guaranteed to be the latest, the server will return an error. In our case, the transfer in Boston will fail because at that moment, my account is empty and the server will return an error. For availability, the server cannot return an error. It must return the data even if it is not the latest version. And the partition tolerance means that the system continues to operate despite some messages from uh, being dropped it were delayed by the network between nodes. Indeed, CAP are the benefits of the distributed database, but in reality, at most, we can only achieve two points at the same time. So welcome to the real world. For the problem of bank I mentioned before, they want consistency. When client A send a request for transferring, the system will wait until this con commit get both database in Seattle and Boston. Then my balance will become zero, which will prevent the invalid transfer in Boston. But during the waiting period, any other operations of my account will be logged, which affect the availability of system. But in some case, we don't need a consistency. On the contrary, we want the availability. So in our project, we sacrifice consistency to get availability. And that's the end of my part. I will handle the next part to Fuyao. Thank you, guys. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Fuyao. Thanks for each in. Um, so I'm a graduate student uh, from BU, and now I'm working at Sina Health uh, INC. Uh, nice to see you guys, and uh, I'd like to continue to introduce our work. So our choice is to use Gaussian protocol. In Gaussian protocol, every node is equal. They don't need a leader to control them, and on the contrary, they transfer messages between themselves. And they spread messages periodically and only to their neighbors. As you can see in this GIF, they transfer messages like pandemic. It's, it's good in our project, but do not do this in our real life, okay? Next slide, please. So in this way, we have our own, our own advantages. Uh, firstly, our database is decentralized. Nodes don't need to know everything about the cluster. This reduces a large amount of work for a node. Now the nodes can fully concentrate on their own business. And as long as the node is connected to the network, it is able to send data to the whole cluster. Then we also have scalability. The cluster becomes much easier to scale and can grow, uh, can grow naturally. Also, we don't care about the temporary failure of a specific node. The other nodes will work continuously. And in addition, we have uniform convergence. The data would be spread from mouse to mouse, just like I just said, it's like a pandemic. And the data transfer speed up could be exponential depending on the topology. So the inconsistency of a cluster will become consistent very soon. Based on this, we named our project as the Gossiper. So, okay, here's the way we implement Gossip protocol. Firstly, our P2P communication. The entire network relies on P2P communication, and we use site reconciliation to efficiently synchronize data between different data sources. Site reconciliation takes the union of the two sites, and in the case of collision, it takes the later version of an entry. The collision handler is parallel to the database design and can be adjusted to specific system settings such as data lens, purity, etc., etc. And secondly, we have heartbeats. Heartbeats from a node ensures the nodes are healthy, responsive, and contributing to the network. It is also used to determine whether it is necessary to reconstruct the network or circumvent a specific node. I'll talk more examples later about this. And thirdly, we use LevelDB, which is an open source key value storage as our bottom level storage. Uh, so our database is designed to store key value pairs. Finally, our neighbor list and member structure is used for reconstructing network topology in case any neighboring nodes fail and the 
network falls to suboptimal state of communication. Next slide, thank you. Um, with this kind of design, we make our database as available as possible. For example, we have four nodes here in a cluster and they form a mesh network. They, connect, they are connected to each other, but suddenly two of them were crushed. If we are in a strong consistency database, we cannot do anything now until they get back to us because the leader node cannot get the majority of its followers heartbeat. But in Gossiper, we can still write data to those two alive nodes. And whenever the two dead nodes get back, they get the data eventually. Also about our member list structure, for example, in this kind of ring network topology, if one of the nodes is crushed, the cluster becomes a line. With no doubt that we don't want this, right? But our member list can recursively get the neighbor's neighbor and connect the node to it. That's what we want. Okay, talking about set reconciliation, it is an efficient way to synchronize data between nodes and it is our core tag. It firstly determines the union of two sites and only transfers their symmetric differences. It minimizes the total amount of communication and this re reduction of communication reduces bandwidth consumption and the amount of time for data transfer. Like in this com uh, example, Alice and Bob both have one, both have A, B, and E. So just need to synchronize the D from Alice and the C from Bob. About the performance and more details, Bowen will talk more about it later. Next slide, please. There are several synchronization protocols already implemented in my professor from Boston University, Ari Trechenberg's Ripple, like CPI Sync, IBLT Sync, Google Sync, and Full Sync. This library is written in C++, and there is also a Golang version in Bowen's GitHub. They are shown on the top. It's really welcome to import or contribute to them. And thank you, everyone. I'll hand it back to Bowen. All right, thank you, Fuya. So those are some of the exemplary state-of-the-art set reconciliation protocols. And we could use any of them for our purpose to synchronize data between the nodes. Now, in our implementation, we used IBLT, but let's take a closer look at some of their performances. So first of all, let's look at this graph here. We are looking at the communication cost and time versus database size graph. So in this graph, we try to reconcile the differences between two databases on the same machine to remove the network vari uh, variability. Now, we fix the number of differences, uh, different entries between the two databases and only increase the database size from left to right as indicated our, uh, by our X axis. The left Y axis is the number of bytes communicated between two nodes uh, in order to synchronize the two databases. This is also known as the communication cost. And the right Y axis is the time cost for the synchronization operation. We're not counting the time needed to input each entry from the database into our uh, uh, data structure. We can uh, easily do that as uh, we add elements onto our database. So the solid line in this graph are the communication cost for each protocols. We have the magenta as the database size, black for IBLT and blue for um, a one type of CPI sync. We can see the properties of this set reconciliation protocols right away that the database size makes zero impact on the communication cost. As you can see, um, this is also a log log scale graph so that we are seeing a drastic change in the database size from left to right without any change in the uh, in the differences between the two databases, the bandwidth consumption remain almost constant, as you can see in the blue and black line over there. Now, the dotted line, um, the, uh, they are the time cost, which 
for both protocols are theoretically they should be correlated to the differences uh, to the amount of differences between two instances but what you see there is actually fluctuations um so in terms of speed we lean towards iblt you can see that uh, it's a slightly lower but for communication cost uh, reduction we would definitely lean towards the cpi sync next slide oh you're uh, yeah next slide please thank you all right so in this graph, we have the same setup, except for we want to show the communication and time cost when we increase the number of entry differences between the two database. That is what we replaced with on the X axis. We are looking at a linear growth in both communication and time cost as the difference grows. In this, gra in this graph, we fixed the two database size, so we are seeing that at a certain point, which is uh, the magenta line over there, we could, we would be better off sending the entire database over to reconcile the differences than using one of these protocols. So these sad reconciliation protocol are best used for reconciling a certain percentage of differences before the scheme of trading computation for communication costs become less beneficial and uh, we used this rule within our gossip DB as well. Next slide, please. All right, so let's also take a look at some of our top applicable situations that could best benefit from a distributed system with such a design. Um, our database is best used for systems that can work with weak consistency and require fast write and read operations to any distributed nodes, especially for systems that require fast scaling, allow P2P communication, and has inputs not prone to collision. So one of our top example would be the CDN database, which um, stores cache version of website content in multiple geographical locations around the world for users to access. That uh, reduces their latency, right? But this is the type of the system that can afford to care very little about consistency, but rather that the data gets to the places eventually. Because just for a point of reference, not that long ago, the synchronization between different instances of CDN uh, uh, Metastore is about uh, 48 hours, give or take, and each meta entry is, uh, in this case, less likely to collide with each other because we're talking about uh, different websites here. So, um, for our next example, we also have um, the Cluster Federation, which um, this year, we finally, finally have a project um, from Kubernetes. It's called KubeFed to federate a set of clusters. Although um, it is somehow still under the model that requires a um, hosting cluster as, um, as it will be the one to joining other clusters into the federation. And then, uh, well, that's the current design. And as the project grows, the federated cluster would need a way to keep their data in sync with each other. And uh, uh, given the eventual consistency requirements of the Kubernetes cluster, the gossiper could perhaps be one of the best fitting um, database for such a federation when it evolves into a fully decentralized system. Because when we're talking about federation, we really aren't thinking about we have a, a one uh, hosting cluster there. We really are talking about a federated, fully distributed cluster. So that's the, uh, with that uh, in the main goal, um, perhaps this is worth a shot. And um, at last, our, uh, one of our applicable situation would be um, for uh, smart grid. There's, um, 
the smart grids are powered by a bunch of IoT devices connected using ad hoc connection under different type of network topology. Some of uh, some people even refer to them as fog, or instead of cloud, they were saying ah, it's called fog. But it, you know, it it, 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 it kind of uh, the naming kind of uh, uh, become a bit derivative. But <laughs> um, so these devices consist a huge network that spreads out of this uh, to the city. To the world, devices like traffic cameras, sensors under some bridges to watch the water levels, right? They are required to send data back to a central place for aggregated processing. So to do that, the system could rely on the gossiper to spread data. Now, devices in remote places could send data to its neighboring devices and then propagate back to the cloud for later processing. In this situation, data is individualized for each device so that they are very unlikely to collide with each other, or actually they don't really collide with each other because we might we just uh, have the device ID uh, infused in the entry there. So, but this type of system requires read and write, or maybe not read, but definitely write at any node devices and the system is most likely to care about the eventual consistency rather that a, uh, some type of entry goes to the cloud um, right away, right? So, of course, these are just some of the many applications that we want to inspire. This type of database is useful uh, for the age of cloud and distributed system. And we want to encourage you for involve, uh, involving in such of an idea into your future design. And uh, hashtag, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, cube, cube fat um, maybe should consider us. But <laughs> um, So speaking of the future design, in our work, we would like to um, investigate a lot of uh, more um, aspects. Next slide, please. So, For, uh, for us, we would like to investigate the best ways to build a cluster of fully distributed nodes and construct their neighboring and member structure to create most resilient system on the different type of networks. So as uh, Fu Yao previously pointed out, we have a way to uh, make the uh, type of network to be resilient, but we definitely would want to uh, make more progress on that because uh, as you might have uh, seen that uh, some of them are uh, kind of a greedy approach. And uh, next up, we, also, we would also like to investigate the network topology impact for the system uh, performance. So for example, um, a ring type uh, network would result in each node only able to communicate with two other nodes in the system, whereas the mesh network would interconnect all the nodes in the system. Although the ring type of network would result in a system that takes longer to synchronize the entire network uh, than in the mesh topology, but the mesh network would definitely require much more resource to establish the connection and more likely to require the devices um, to be geographically co-located. And um, at last, we would also benefit from some kind of a consensus algorithm um, as a type of a um, plug-in option to satisfy some systems that still require consistency with some of the availability trade-offs. So that is something that we are willing to do and that we, we can do, and um, hopefully that would be part of our future work. Thank you. Next slide, please. So um, with that, I would like to thank you and welcome you to check out our repositories if you would like to try them out. My gossip, uh, the My Gossip repo contains the Gossiper DB and uh, the CPI repo is a library of all of these state-of-the-art set reconciliation protocols. They are freshly implemented uh, straight from, um, uh, from the paper themselves. And uh, uh, I could see on the chat that Professor Trottenberg and uh, some of my lab mates are present in this talk. So I'm very grateful that you guys are uh, uh, that you guys are here. I'm very happy about it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so hopefully uh, the documentation in those public repo within this uh, uh, public repositories are able to guide you and to walk through how to use them. And thank you very much. Next slide, please. Uh, thank you. And I would like to acknowledge uh, Ashton Davis for coaching our presentation. I, uh, I, I have to acknowledge that he's here too. So I'm really happy that everybody um, that's uh, somehow involved in this project are present at this talk. And thank you very much. Um, we would uh, uh, ha be happy to take um, your questions now. Thanks. Very, um, very interesting topic. And I was so excited because I have a lot of questions. Uh, so uh, the, 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 the first time when I look at the, the, the slides and videos, it sort of remind me of, because uh, I previously uh, started Stanford online course. Uh, it's the course is presented by the professor. I think it's called, uh, I was typing the type channel, it's called Jules. Have you heard that one, that person? Uh, he's talking about uh, some, um, let me get his full name. Uh, I think his full name is, um, okay. Uh, he talked about a lot about the information propagations and how, um, how, how we can utilize some graph, uh, graph algorithms to, um, to, uh, to, to help with the, uh, with the nodes uh, communications. Um, uh, so um, it's, it's kind of related to the topic today because uh, in that course, have a lot of the mm, series. It's also, uh, I think, it's similar to the, to the, to the talks today. Uh, beyond that, so the first question I have is that um, when, when in the first several slides you're talking about that the several transactions happen at the same time, right? So, so conflicts happens because uh, because they are not synchronized, no consistency. Uh, have you ever think about to roll back or how the logs can come in in that situation? Right. So, any type of conflicts. Um, so each system has their own uh, strong suit and weak uh, uh, spots, right? So for our system, uh, our strong suit is our availability and fault tolerance, and then we are relaxing the consistency, which would uh, uh, cause those, uh, uh, um, uh, those how, how should I say, um, conflicts uh, resolving issue. But in our design, we are taking uh, we are trying a eventual consistency approach so we are taking the latest uh, version of certain uh, key value pairs but um yes to your uh, one of the uh, uh, as we all mentioned uh, we consider this type of uh, conflict re uh, resolving um idea to be uh well parallel to our project because um, it could, uh, as I also mentioned, it could be as part of the plugin to uh, to do that. There are plenty of ways to resolve conflict, but they are sort of evolved around uh, what the system look like. So, for example, uh, we might be looking at a, a cryptographic uh, um, database, then we might be uh, wanting to look at the uh, key values for uh, number of trailing zeros, number of leading zeros, or uh, how long a key is. Um, those might be the options to, uh, in order to choose which one to, uh, to, to, to save. There are um, other examples, but I don't really have them in, uh, on top of my head. Um, but um, a lot of other systems have their consist uh, consensus, uh, for example, by uh, Pexos, uh, and, uh, and so on, they, they, they elect, uh, they, um, they admit uh, some, um, well, yeah, they, they use some kind of a maturity to vote. Um, we could also put, uh, potentially do that, but uh, it is not something that's, um, that we focus on this time. Um, but 
like you said, it's important, and we definitely want to include that as part of our future work. The, the reason I, I mentioned the lock linkage into the, uh, this picture is that I, I was thinking on, um, because it's, it's fairly easy to implement with the lock rather than, because um, I mean, I mean, you right. So, so you're you're saying that if we inspect the logs, uh -huh. we can see how the data has been propagated, has been evolving, right? right? Right, right. So the problem with that is, if I say I write to Node A, I, I write one version to Node A, and then my second version of uh, changes, actually I write it to Node B, right? You cannot, at that point, you cannot say. I look at the logs and I know exactly go, uh, what's going on because by then you would need multiple logs and then compare them together to say, hmm, maybe we should go with one of these things. And know that there's no guarantee to say that uh, which one, uh, um, say, which one is the latest um, in that sense because um, we know the famous Lampert clock. Right, we we know a lot of famous work, uh, including the Google True Time. A lot of famous work to try to uh, basically um, tell time at each distributed nodes, and by just simply looking at the logs and try to aggregate them based on the information there. Like even though, uh, even if you know all the logs and then try to combine them, you might still don't know which one is the one that you want. So um, that's why sometimes you need, uh, uh, depending on the system, you might want the consensus algorithm, uh, meaning that uh, whenever I decided I want to go with this one, then uh, then no further discussion. We're done here. Uh, we're just going to go with that one. We are also um, we can also use other algorithms that I mentioned, uh, like uh, from the cryptography, um, that uh, we choose the key value with certain traits um, by comparing them together, and then we choose the one that, uh, depending on some uh, some of the rules, we choose certain traits. Um, but in general, yes, it, you you feel like if I see the log, then then I should be able to know exactly what's going on. But that might not be always the case, especially if the traffic gets to be um, directed to different nodes and then you try to aggregate them, that's when things go uh, kind of a horribly complicated. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, Cause, mm, um, uh, uh, never mind. Um, another question is that uh, when you're talking about the, the, the gossips, have you ever think about some notes can be backtracked, right? So it's like more like a, a, I mean, from a circle, from a ring, right? If you can reach in the first time, why should we reach in the, sec uh, in the second time or fourth time? It's going to be backtracked. How did you avoid this kind of situation that can bring to the... Uh, the implementations. Right. So this is one of the those properties that comes free with set reconciliation. So in set reconciliation, we're not sending the differences. We are sending the equivalence of the, uh, like we're sending amount of data that's the equivalent size of the differences between uh, the uh, two databases. And whenever we do that, um, so let, let me take a very simple example with the IBLT case. So IBLT in the in a nutshell is basically I have a lot of keys. I have like a hundred keys and then the other node has like a hundred keys. Now we XOR all of the, all of those keys into uh, one, one entry. And then uh, the other thing do the same. Now, Let's pretend that they only have that one difference. Now you X or those results, you're gonna get that one difference, right? 
Yeah. If they are the same, if you XOR them, they're <laughs> going to be zeros. Right, right. So this is basically, in a nutshell, what set reconciliation is. And um, if uh, the reason why it won't backtrack is that if you connect, uh, c communicated with me, and then I already have everything that you have, then if we if we check that, set reconciliation is not going to do anything. It's just going to say, "Oh, you guys are the same." Bye. Then we're done there. Uh, but right, uh, you are using uh, XOR flag to check, but is there any way to avoid using just directly skip it too? Because uh, yeah, we. We also, uh, in our implementation, we definitely has a way to calculate the digest um, of uh, each uh, database. That's uh, basically, basically what, uh, what's happening before we uh, try to sync uh, the two databases. We calculate the digest, we, uh, we compare the digest, are they the same? Then we need, don't need to do anything about it. Yeah, because uh, in, I mean, in a big database, so it will uh, increase a lot of complexity. Just, I mean, if um, you do not know which way to go exactly, just, I mean, just propagate all the possible ways you choose, but you didn't know whether or not that one already have been updated, right? Exactly. But that is the fun thing about set reconciliation mm -hmm. is that if you already done that, uh -huh. it won't do anything. Okay. Okay. Right. So, so, so basically think about this. If you constantly send to another guy your XORs and then they are the same, you are not really doing much uh, damage, right? The other guy always say that, oh, there's no difference. Okay, right, right, right. Uh, uh, another question is that, do you have sure. any specific graph algorithms to use? Sorry, graph uh, graph algorithms. Yeah, to use for your cases. Uh, for the general case, you mean? Uh, for um, for uh, for um, right for how 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 um, I mean in the um, broader view, it's more like the how the the information was uh, propagated. Or... Right. So so basically. Um, let me rephrase your question and see if it's right. So uh, you're basically asking, do we have any of uh, theoretical bounds or uh, expectations of um, how the data will be propagating uh, Hello? within our type of work, right? Hello? Is it, uh, are, are, are you asking that uh, um, do we have some kind of uh, analysis on how, our, uh, how the data is going to propagate within um, within our implementation. Right, right. Because, because I mean, I was thinking that because um, I, oh, it's a long time ago I I started that course, uh, but right now I couldn't remember clearly about the, some contents. But more like um, comparably different algorithms uh, have a different trade-offs. Uh, so I I do not know which, for your cases you care more about the what, about the complexity, about the consistencies, or about, uh, I mean, the real, real time, if I mean, response says, right? So I don't know which, which one you, you prefer. Uh, so that's uh, how you gonna choose which algorithm you're gonna use. Uh, oh, uh, so uh, come again. So you're actually asking what, uh, what set reconciliation algorithm uh, we are, uh, we're trying to use or, or best fit. In uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bet, the, the, what we can bet, best benefit from it while using the, the uh, reconciliation algorithm you're talking about. Right. So, so the essence of set reconciliation algorithm has been trading communication cost with computation, right? Mm -hmm. So each of those algorithms would have a strong suit, a weak suit, um, mainly, I compared IBLT and uh, CPI sync in um, our graph earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see that while IBLT has a slightly faster um, computation time, its communication 
um, is, uh, cost trade-off is not as, uh, as efficient as um, CPI sync. Mm -hmm. So with this in mind, you could envision two different types of systems. One type, which it really cares about uh, the communication, uh, saving the communication cost, saving the amount of a bandwidth um, between each of the nodes. For example, for uh, IoT devices, they are living on batteries. Um, they might have a quite of a distance to propagate their data. All of that would contribute to why you might want to choose CPI sync because um, it doesn't really uh, require, because one of the more or more important or more costly way, uh, 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 more costly energy consumption uh, it happens during transmission during transmitting data from one end to another. Um, and, uh, and so, so yeah, for, for, so for this type of system, maybe CPI sync works, but maybe for uh, say within Google Cloud, uh, where we have, uh, uh, where they have so much bandwidth between uh, the nodes, they don't really care about um, sending a lot more data um, to, uh, to one another, then maybe we could go for IBLT or even just uh, sending the entire data because uh, they don't care. But uh, essentially, they would care because Google kind of stores a lot of uh, several petabytes of even more of uh, data there. So um, it, it would still work. And uh, if you dig deeper on the set reconciliation uh, algorithms, they all kind of have a boundaries depending on uh, the, each setup, of course, um, that at certain point, past, uh, past a certain point amount of differences between two instances, um, the amount of uh, communication cost is no longer reduced by computing, um, by, by the computation that, that's involved in there, um, which also was showing one of our graphs. So um, essentially, when we're choosing certain type of algorithm, for um, for our system, for for each of the uh, uh, for uh, different situations, we need to keep in mind that they have slightly different trade-offs, and uh, um, we would uh, mostly concern with most common uh, cases, and uh, um, somehow also have a hybrid um, uh, use some type of hybrid approach to say that maybe uh, when they pass certain uh, values, we would change to a different protocol, or maybe the set reconciliation is not worth it anymore if all of my things are different and I better off just send it in the entire database, right? Right, right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, no problem. Last question. I, 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 no no yeah, problem. I, 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 yeah, I love yeah. all the questions. <laughs> so, uh, 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 so when I see the, uh, the plots, uh, uh, so can anybody share the screen? That's the plots, that one, that's two y-axis. Yeah, uh, we, we have two plots. One is for different database size, one is for differences between the two uh, instances. How, how did you implement that, that one? Through MATLAB or MATLABLIB? Oh, heck no. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, it, it, oh go, go back to the graph. You can. <laughs> Go back to the graph. Um, do you mean the data, uh, where the data come from, or do you mean how I graphed it? How you graph it? Oh, oh, oh. So the last exciting part, <laughs> graphing it is just MATLAB. <laughs> oh, MATLAB. Okay. Yes. I Because, uh, um, because I mean, it's easy to. Uh, it's. Um, I think I you using something like a plot y y. Like this way to to make two y axis. Uh, there are a lot of approaches. This uh, this is MATLAB. It cost me like tw twenty minutes to finish everything. So it's not great. Uh, it's not a big deal uh, in terms of this thing. I could okay. potentially share how I graphed it on, uh, onto the GitHub if you want. Um, but uh, it's not that hard. <laughs> if you just check. Um, how to graph uh, the y-axis on the right side, it's there. Yeah, uh, I mean, beyond the, the how you graph it, because uh, back then I will also uh, try to graph something, but 
the, the the frameworks that I was using at the end just conflict. I mean, when I compile, it fails. The sort of the, uh, I mean, the code complains because uh, um, the some framework that I was using uh, is is it's not to allowed to use some something like like the plot y y to have the two y axis. So at the time, I I, I just I just give up on how to put <laughs> to the data into the same 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 uh, y uh, two y axis, but with the one plot. I just split it out. I give up. Uh, yeah, to be honest, I give it up. But today, when I say uh, I was very interested in how you did it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, beyond that. Can you explain how the the graph again? The about this one and the and the. And uh, sure. And to, sure. Well, sorry, sorry about the overshooting the time, but I just want to. You're the moderator. In. I'm okay with hanging around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. So yeah, yeah. So if you take a look at this graph right here, we have the database. It, it's a log log scale, right? So right, everything right. is log here. So right. on the x-axis, we uh, we have the database size. That means from left to right the database increases drastically from, uh, say, uh, 100, uh, uh, 100 megabytes to actually a, a huge uh, amount there. Now, um, you, can see, uh, uh, you can see uh, on, the y, uh, on the left y-axis is the communication cost, which is basically how many of those checksums that we're sending to one another uh, between the two uh, databases to make them in sync with each other. And, uh, um, and uh, uh, those solid works, thanks for you. Um, so those solid lines, they are, um, well, uh, they, uh, they basically belong to the left uh, Y axis. And uh, you can see the blue line, the black line, those um, stayed constant throughout the increase of the databases. Um, the uh, magenta line goes up which is the uh, database size. Um, I put it there so that uh, people could uh, have which, a which, visual which, of- uh, which, which line is your approach? Which dotted line? Uh, oh, uh, they, are the, they are the solid lines. So um, solid, solid, line. solid line for the, for the magenta is database size. The blue one is the IBLT, which we used in our uh, database. The black is the CPI sync which uh, we didn't use in our implementation, but it's there if we want to switch up. Oh, so, so comparably, um, uh, uh, I mean, with the database size increases, uh, your approach, I mean, number, total number of bytes trans transfer keep as constant, right? It didn't increase. Yes, yes because because cell reconciliation only cares about the difference between the two instances and uh, uh, for for example i just uh, uh, i just mentioned the uh, x or example right i don't care how big or small the database is i just need to send that one x or to the other side mm -hmm. to get that one difference out right oh yeah yeah because because in yes. this in this way um uh, you know um so because because if we can know which nodes we do not need to uh, propagate again, so that we can dramatically decrease the time for for or decrease the steps for the for propagating, right? Right, right, right. exactly. So uh, when, on the on the first attempt, we can see that oh, are they the same? Then they're the same. Then we don't need to do any of it. Oh, so this in this one? case, yeah, yeah in, in this graph, we have a fixed number of differences still. Okay. And also the time is also very low, right? Yes, um, the time is because um, we only uh, consider synchronization time. Uh, we don't care about the time when we added the, uh, the entry into our um, uh, data structure. We just care about when we're doing that transfer and then we, uh, the other one figures out uh, what are the differences. That's the synchronization time. And uh, that time doesn't really change what you see here is a more or less of uh, fluctuations because they're within like a second or so, and uh, the, my laptop is kind of old. <laughs> oh, where's data come from? Sorry, where is the data come from? 
what's the oh, data uh, for, for plotting this one? Oh, so plotting this, we are actually using randomized uh, randomized data. Oh. This is a yeah, this is a performance graph, right? So we don't uh, really go around and say uh, I'm gonna grab a lot of data from somewhere else. We're yeah. basically generated a bunch of uh, uh, random data to putting uh, as entries to put inside. Okay, but uh, it's more like before you you have to build the graph graph first before you test it, right? I'm sorry. You have to build the the graph for 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 um for the data. You have to build the graph first, right? To before testing, right? I, I don't, uh, you mean you mean build the the structure first? Right, 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 right. right. Structure first before testing. Yeah, right. yeah, yes, of course. We we structured it so that we show these two type of graphs. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the explanations. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you for all the questions. Those are really nice questions. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think nobody has more questions. Uh, <laughs> I, I am very, very happy that a lot of um, very important people uh, that paid a lot of attention to the project were here today. So yeah, uh, I, I, I highly recommend it for the for this professor's uh, courses. Uh, he's, yep. in, he's in Stanford. Just checking his courses. Um, I think I forgot the title for the courses, but I. Think could be extremely useful for, uh, for your um, uh, for for your situations for the for the for the uh, for the talks you're talking about today. It's, it's pretty related. And, Thank uh, you. Yes, I and, I, I uh, I'm googling him. <laughs> and he's uh, he's 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 a he's a pioneer, more like a cutting edge pioneer in this area. So it's going to be very useful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Okay, thanks, lesson today. Yeah. Thank you, Ethan, for staying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No problem. Okay, thank you. Bye.